all scholars agree that the Christian faith or the Christian movement, the way as it was called at, at the first, came into existence because the original disciples firmly and sincerely believed that God had raised Jesus from the dead. And they proclaimed this message everywhere that they went. Indeed, Christianity could not have come to, into existence without this prior belief. It's difficult to exaggerate what a disaster the crucifixion was for these first disciples. It didn't simply mean that their beloved master was dead and gone. It was far more than that. Under Old Testament law, anyone who was executed by hanging was literally under the curse of God. He was a man accursed by God. And the Jews applied this Deuteronomic passage to crucifixion as well. So that what the crucifixion of Jesus revealed, in effect, was that the Pharisees were right after all. That for these three years, these disciples had been following a man under the malediction of God. A, a man who was a heretic, a Jewish schismatic, an accursed man. So that the crucifixion put a tremendous question mark behind everything that they had believed and entrusted their lives to. And therefore, the crucifixion for these disciples was literally a catastrophe. And the resurrection of Jesus is what enabled them to believe that Jesus was Messiah after all, that God had vindicated Jesus by raising him from the dead, despite the fact that the Jewish leaders had crucified him for blasphemy. It showed that his claims were true after all. So that without this prior belief in the resurrection of Jesus, the Christian movement could never have sprung into being. It could never have come to exist. So the question then becomes, well, where in the world did the disciples come up with this outlandish belief that God had raised Jesus from the dead? If you deny that Jesus really did rise from the dead, then you've got to explain the origin of the disciples' beliefs in terms of either Christian influences pagan influences or Jewish influences on them. Well now obviously it couldn't have been the result of Christian influences for the simple reason that there wasn't any Christianity yet. Since the belief in Jesus' resurrection was foundational for Christianity, it cannot be explained as the later retrojection of the Christian church back into the records because there wouldn't have been any Christian church had they not believed in the resurrection to begin with. But neither can it be plausibly explained from the side of pagan influences. Back around the turn of the century and the heyday of the so-called history of religion schools, uh, many comparative religious scholars ransacked the literature of paganism and comparative religion to try to show parallels to certain Christian beliefs in other world religions, including beliefs like the resurrection, and some uh, thought to explain the origin of the disciples' beliefs as the result of the influence of these pagan beliefs. The movement, however, soon collapsed, and this principally for two reasons. First of all, the parallels were spurious. The myths of dying and rising gods, such as Adonis and Osiris in pagan mythology, are not attached to historical persons at all. Rather, these gods are merely symbols for the passage of the seasons, as in winter the god dies and then in spring he comes back to life again as the new crops uh, come up and the spring come, brings new birth again. These are merely symbols for the passage of the seasons. And it would be simply unthinkable for the original disciples to believe that their uh, compatriot, Jesus of Nazareth, was risen from the dead on the basis of these myths about dying and rising seasonal gods. But in any case, secondly, there was simply no causal link between these supposed parallels and the disciples' belief in the resurrection of Jesus. Indeed, there is actually no trace at all, historically, of these myths of dying and rising gods in first century Palestine, so that the disciples simply had no contact with these sorts of things, and therefore the causal link is simply missing. Thirdly, what about Jewish beliefs in the resurrection? Well, again, I've described uh, a moment ago how radically different from the resurrection of Jesus the Jewish beliefs uh, about resurrection were. In fact, Joachim Jeremias, a famous German New Testament scholar, has said that there is nothing in ancient Judaism which is even comparable to 
the resurrection of Jesus. Given their Jewish beliefs about life after death and so forth, confronted with the crucifixion of Jesus, that most the disciples could have simply uh, kept their master's tomb as a shrine, uh, preserved his bones until the day of the resurrection at the end of the world when they would hope to be rejoined with him and all the righteous of Israel in the kingdom of God. But given their Jewish beliefs, they would not have come up with the absurd idea that God had raised him from the dead already. So that none of these factors serve to account for the origin of the disciples' belief that God had raised Jesus from the dead. We have here a belief which nothing in terms of antecedent historical influences can account for. And therefore, it seems to me that the best explanation for the origin of this belief and the origin of the Christian movement itself is that the belief was true. Jesus did rise from the dead, and that explains the origin of the Christian faith.